Monsieur le Président, nous sommes en avis. Honor, we are in public session. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, please proceed, Mr. Garcia. Now, Madam Witness, uh, you're describing to us how you were at the time on the 31st of December 2007 in the compound of uh, number six. Now, can you please explain to us briefly what happened? Okay. When we were still there, we had some shoutings. Um, the shoutings were being shouted by Kikuyu's in Kikuyu name. Just so to be, it be clear, Madam Witness, when you said uh, shouted by Kikuyu in Kikuyu name, you mean in Kikuyu language? Yes. And what was all this shouting about? They are coming. Can you tell us who was coming? heading towards the direction of Munyaka. Now, was that the first time on that day that you had seen these Kikuyu, the Kikuyu that were running away? Yes. Do you know where they were coming from, the Kikuyu? They were coming from the. They were coming from the direction of the better farm. And how many of these kikuyu were there approximately? They were around fifty to a hundred youths. Were they armed? Did they have any weapons? Yes. What kind of weapons, Adam Witness? They had rungus. Anything else? And pangas. Now, just for the record, you said that they had rungus, is it? R-U-N-G-U-S, is that correct? Yes, it is. Can you just briefly tell us what a rungu is? It's a log, kind of round. Is it made out of wood? Yes. You've also mentioned pangas. Can you just... Describe to us what a panga is. It's a sharp, used, sharp, sharp object which can be used to cut something. Now you're saying that these uh, kikuyus, were they, uh, you were saying 50 to 100 youth, so they were youth. Uh, when you saw them uh, for the first time, where were they, what were they doing exactly? Uh, they were running. They were not seated, but they were running t towards the Unyaka direction. Was anyone following them? Yes. Who was following them? the Kalenjin youths.
Now I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about these Kalenjin youth that were running after the Kiku youth. Do you remember approximately how many Kalenjin youth we're talking about that you saw on that day? I can't tell how many were there, but there were many. Just in case, if you are able to answer, were there more or less than a hundred, approximately? If you can answer. A hundred, approximately. Now, from what I understand, this is something that you observed with your own eyes. Is that correct? Yes. Just to be clear that when you observed this, you were inside the compound of number six. Is that correct? Yes. Now, Madam Witness, regarding these Kalenji youth, can you tell us whether they were armed or not? Did they have any weapons? Yes, they had. They had bows and arrows. Could you describe them to us? How were they dressed? They were white and face head headed torn clothes tall slim and dirty now just to clear up uh, their description line 104 Actually, page 104, line 6, you said they were white and face-headed. Um, can you just explain, was, the, was their face visible or their hair? Yes. And what is the white that you're saying? What I meant is their hair it was white, their face was white. And in regards to their clothing, what kind of clothing were they wearing? They wore torn clothes. What about their age? 18 and above. Now you said that these Kalenjin youth were chasing the Kikuyu youth. What happened? Mr. Uh, Gessie, yeah, can you hold that question, please? Um, witness, earlier on, when you were asked to describe Kalenjins, you said they were black. And now you're giving us testimony and telling us that uh, Kalenjins whose face were white and their head was white. What are you telling us about the head and face. Okay, what I meant is a Kalenjin is a black person, tall, slim. But when they were in the battlefield, they were all in chalk, head and face. Thank you. Another question for you. You had also said earlier that some people were armed with rungus and pangas and also another group were asked with, armed with bows and arrows. What are you telling us? What I'm saying is the Kalenjin youth were the ones with white face and white head. But the Kikuyus were the ones with rungus and I can tell a Kikuyu. All right. So what you are saying is that the Kikuyu youth 
were armed with rungos and pangas and the Kalenjin youth were armed with bows and arrows. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Thank you. Now, Madam Witness, uh, you said that the Kalenjin youth were chasing the Kikuyu youth. Uh, can you explain to us what happened? Did they manage to chase them on the way or not? Yes. After a long run with them, uh, on your way from Better Farm behind Munyaka route, there's a boundary between the Kalenjin and the Kikuyu. And when the Kikuyu arrives, uh, reaches their destination, a Kalenjin cannot enter the hood of a Kikuyu. So after the Kikuyus managed to get the other side, the Kalenjin has to come back. So just to be clear, when you're referring to the other side, that's the boundary between what is Kalenjin area and Kikuyu area. Is that correct? Yes. Now, just before we continue, uh, you continue telling us what exactly happened. I just need one clarification. You mentioned Munyaka. Uh, can you tell us is, what ethnic groups live in, uh, in Munyaka? Kikuyu are the majority. And from what I understand of your testimony, Munyaka, is that an area, a town, a village? What, what kind of a place is this? It's a village. Thank you, Madam Witness. Now, you said that you saw the uh, Kalenjin youth chasing the Kikuyu youth. Were any of the, were any, was anyone injured or struck in any which way during this chase? I couldn't tell. Now, what happened after that? Then the Kalenjin youths came back and number six place was the first home in that area from Unyaka going back to Betafa. So it was the first place they attacked first. Now, can you describe to us how that attack took place? What happened exactly? Okay. Um, back in the compound, I was with number... Can okay, wait. So, guys, yeah. Are you sure about this? We can, uh, Your Honors, uh, we, if we are cautious, overly cautious, we can go into private session. Uh, but I'm, I'm confident that with the uh, list of persons list, uh, we can go through a certain amount of this information. I'll try and guide the witness so that we don't have any problems. I don't know. Okay. Now, Madam Witness, just, I just want you to just uh, uh, realize that we are in public session, so please try and resort to the numbers whenever you can. And if you can't, well, then uh, I will solicit leave from the court to go into private session so you can explain it more fully. Uh, but I understand, and correct me that I'm, if I'm wrong, but you were inside number six's place when the, uh, then the youth came back uh, to the compound. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Now, can you explain to us uh, this compound? Is there a gate or any kind of uh, door? securing uh, the entrance to it? Yes, there's a gate. And just so we understand and, and can picture it a little bit better, is this a, a, a gate with steel bars or is it a wooden gate? What kind of a, can you see through the gate? No, you can't so see through, but there's a small hole you can peep. It's a steel gate. Now, when these Kalenjin youth returned, were you, uh, where were you? were you? Were you behind this gate? I was still in the compounds, inside the compound. Now, 
Now, were the Kalenjin youths able to get in through the gate? At first, they couldn't because number six had to pursue them not to. Yanners, I'm going to ask that we go into private session. In this manner, I'll be able to lead, obviously, if my defense counsel doesn't have any objection and we can get through this a little more efficiently.